an artificial heart. So he discussed this with this gentleman here, and this was Dr. Albert Starr. He was a young cardiac surgeon in Oregon, uh, in the United States. And they sat down and they discussed things together. So Mr. Edwards said, listen, I want to make the first artificial heart. How do we make this thing work? And then Dr. Albert Starr turned around and said, you know what, the heart is too complex. There are too many small components in it. The functioning is not that easy. It's not just a motor which is running. It's very difficult. So let's do something. Let's try and work on one of the small components in the heart. So together, they designed this valve. This is a, an artificial heart valve, which was developed in the 1960s. And very soon, within two years, they developed the Star Edward heart valve. And it was not just designed, but also developed, tested, and implanted in a patient within two years. And that was the story. So that shows the valve. And that shows the same heart valve actually implanted in a patient. Today, I want to tell you about this company called Edwards Life Sciences. Edwards Life Sciences is the same company which started in the 1960s by Mr. Edwards. And today, it's a multi-billion dollar company. They have over 50 years of experience in implants, especially in terms of cardiac valve implants. They have branches in over 100 countries around the world. They have more than 8,500 employees. And more than 2 million patients have been implanted with Edwards Life Sciences valves over the last 40 to 50 years. <coughs> Now, what I want you to take back as a take-home message is not so much so about the monetary benefit that these two people have had, but the advancement in science, especially in terms of biomedical engineering, that these two minds were able to bring across. The number of lives that they have saved, the number of patients who have benefited by this collaboration between an engineer and a heart surgeon. Now having said that, I thought I'll just share with you very briefly about a little bit of research that we do at Frontier Lifeline. We do a lot of work in terms of stem cell therapy. So um, we've worked on differentiation of uh, multipotent stem cells which we take from bone marrow. And these bone marrow cells have been differentiated in culture and we've been able to grow cells, different kinds of cells, starting from adipocytes, which are basically fat cells. Uh, osteocytes, they've been able to grow bone in tissue, uh, hepatocytes, basically liver cells that we've been able to grow, and also heart cells, which we have grown in our lab. Now, it's not just growing the cell, taking uh, bone marrow, differentiating it, and making it into one cell. We've been able to grow it into sheets of cells. And it's not just growing the sheet, it's actually functioning cells. So this is the kind of technology that is actually available. I'm not saying that we're doing some path-breaking work, we will win the Nobel Prize next year. No, that's not true. There are several people doing this kind of research. What I'm saying is that if you put your mind to it, it is possible. This is just the first step. We have been able to grow cells and tissues now. We're hoping that in the long run, we should be able to grow them into actual organs. And this will go a long way in terms of helping patients. So this is the actual procedure where we have taken stem cells and we have actually injected stem cells into the hearts of patients who are dying of heart disease where there is no other option, there is no other treatment option available for them. We are happy to say that we have the largest series of stem cell therapy patients in India. They have treated about 97 patients so far with end stage heart failure. This is Frontier Medical, this is where we undertake most of our research. A research training and development center. It's about 50 kilometers from Chennai, heading on the Calcutta Highway. And we've also been working towards manufacturing tissue-based biological implants. So we're talking about bovine tubular vein. So we're taking veins from buffaloes and also the pericardium. Pericardium, which is basically the covering of the heart and processing that. Also, a artery, basically an artery which is taken from pigs. 
Now, people are like wondering what the hell are they doing? Why are they taking all these animal products and what are they trying to do with it? The fact is that, you know what, when a human has a problem, if another transplant patient is not available, the un only other alternative that you have is to go and look at an animal model. You'd be surprised that most of these tissues are very similar to human tissue. I mean, when God created us, yes, man is a highly evolved animal in, in terms of biology. And that's the reason why there are several organs, there are several tissues that you can take from animals and implant into humans and they work perfectly normally. So this is just some of the kind of research that we do undertake. And I was mentioning to Sir earlier as well, we have several ideas that we are looking for uh, collaborators such as yourself. We're looking at engineers to actually implement and bring into life the ideas that we have. One of the things that we're talking about was like a transporter. And we're looking at miniaturizing one of the existing machines into a smaller version so we can actually make it you know, to transport our heart transplant organs. So the field is huge, the opportunities are vast, but the fact is that unless and until we collaborate, unless and until we talk to each, each other and share our ideas, we're not going to go forward. So this is just the first step. And I'd like to thank and congratulate all the organizers once again, because it's forums such as this Will, that will help in this interaction. As the saying goes, the journey of a million miles begins with a single step. So we have just taken the first step forward. And I'm sure that with the next two to three days time, we we'll have more interaction, more collaboration between your faculty and with others. I'm sure that you'll come up with some brilliant ideas. And I'm sure that India, you people, will be responsible for taking India forward to the next barrier. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a very enlightening presentation. I'm sure many engineers in this room will take a single step and do something more. Bio Ultra 2014, one of the largest national level fests on clinical engineering, had its roots planted in 2009 as a technical symposium. Not saying much, here we show you the journey and evolution of Bio Ultra so far.
We hope to inculcate a sense of competition in students. We aim to test their technical and non-technical abilities through eight different events. So here we have
for that, I would have few announcements for the participants and delegates as well. The events that are taking place in Bayantra 14 start at 11.15 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. That's Authors Inside in Mini Hall 1. Teco Trivia at the same time in Mini Hall 2. From 11.45 to 1 p.m. we have CIA in Bioengineering Block 5th Floor. That is room number 601. Circuit Tricks in BMI Lab 1 and BMI Lab 2. That is 403 and 402 in Architecture Block 4th Floor. From 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. we have Adventure. It's in Mini Hall 1 at the same place. The Glim Shot, that is again from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. in Bioengineering Block 5th Floor in room number B601. Sequest Geology would take place from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. in Mini Hall 2. And the gaming starts at 11.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. in VI Lab in Architecture Block 3rd Floor. The schedule will be put up outside. Apart from this, I would like to, rem uh, I would like to remind all the delegates as well as participants that the basic life support uh, seminar would take place in simulation lab in SRM hospitals sharply at 8.30 tomorrow. I kindly request all the delegates and participants of Bayantra to assemble over there for basic life support concepts. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a centrist waiting outside for all those who have registered for workshop. The Mimic software will be provided to you outside.